welcome to Mag Dump. My name is Will. I'm Andrew. And we didn't script this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell me there are uh, very poor reactions and general lack of knowing what's going on. <laughs> uh, so, Andrew, um, who are we and why are we here? Well, that's a great question. Uh, my name is Andrew Magro. I am a bachelor's in mechanical engineering from Purdue University. I graduated in winter of 2019. Uh, but what's more relevant to you guys is I was a, a both a player, um, staff member, and officer of uh, Purdue's Nerf Club, the Boiler League of Tag. Uh, I started playing my freshman year back in fall of 2015. Uh, I played all the way up until the club fell apart the first time, or not the first time, but the most recent time in uh, probably spring of 2016. Uh, and then from that point forward, I was some sort of staff member, be it just a normal staff, an officer, or, you know, president, vice president, treasurer, game head. I've held all sorts of positions, but uh, the whole time I was working towards making the club a more fun place to be. How about you, Will? Um, absolutely. I am a current Purdue student. Um, I'm a sixth year senior. Um, that's what happens when you change majors <laughs> uh, three times. <laughs> Um, but I am I am currently um, at Purdue. I'm a part of the Boiler League of Tag. I am the current um, elected president. Um, I started uh, as a freshman in the club, and I served on the staff for three or four years. And I actually served on staff with Andrew while he was president. Um, and now that he's graduated, it's kind of fallen on me to guide the club. Um, so I'm I'm the current one in charge of Purdue University's HVZ group, um, the Boiler League of Tag. Your intro is better than mine. I got those elevator pitches for career fairs is down pat. Ah, you know? uh, <laughs> uh, that's that. That'll do it. Um, so for those of you tuning in, you're wondering why do we have a podcast? Um, and basically, it's just because um, I don't know about you, Andrew. Maybe you have a different take on this. Um, we have some pretty interesting thoughts um, about HBZ. We've seen a lot, um, even though our, our range of experience is, well, at least for me personally, it's it's pretty small. I'm just a couple of schools, but we've we've been doing this for a long time, and we've seen a lot of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the podcast really started as, uh, you know, I'm graduated, I'm working a nine to five now. I get pretty bored in the evening, so you know, I call up well on Discord, chat about the good old times. And Will was like, you know, we should start a podcast, and uh, you know, I thought it was a pretty good idea. So like, here we are, like every person ever during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh. Yep. Um, um, well, Will, uh, your favorite HVZ experience? What uh, What do you got here? Gosh, favorite HVZ experience? Um, I'm assuming you mean as a player, because there's, there's a different answer. Different answer. If you mm -hmm. ask me, favorite one I've run. Um, mm -hmm. As a player, my first HVZ game week back in 2016, fall of 2016. Um, was the game week that sold me on the club, right? Like, I'm a freshman. Really? I was, I kind of yeah. had an idea that Nerf was like, like I was into it as, as a kid, but but I was in that stage of life where you're like, oh, that's childish stuff. You don't want to play. Um, and then I saw HVZ. Actually, Mark, Mark dragged me to HVZ. Um, and I played the first game, and I had such a good time. I, I couldn't not come back. Um, I could not apparently devote the rest of my college career to HPZ. Uh, yeah, so... I'm, uh, yeah I'm, I'm in a pretty similar boat right there. And for those of you that, you know, aren't, uh, you know, gone to Purdue in the years 2016 through 2020, Mark is just a mutual friend of Will and I's. But uh, like you, Will, my favorite HPZ experience is most definitely my, uh, most definitely my first game week fall of 2015. I was one of the, you know, the old guard of Boiler League of staff was still there. Like, uh, uh, older BLT folks, you'll probably know names like uh, Tiller, Kyle Kaplan, uh, you know, people, all sorts of people like that. But uh, that was definitely my favorite HVZ experience. It's, I don't know how large the player numbers actually were, but when I was there, you know, it's my first uh, semester in college. I didn't know many people. So to me, it felt like, you know, as big as End War. I didn't really know the campus very well, so it was really spooky walking around at night, you know, looking around, checking your corners. But I, had, I had no clue where I was. Uh, that's just what happens when you're a freshman. I, I mean, we even played on parts of campus that I'd never been on before, like uh, South Campus at South of State Street. 
Um, for those that don't go to Purdue, um, Purdue is kind of separated by a road called State Street. North of State Street, you have like your engineering and sciencey buildings. South of State Street, you have like your artsy and um, your agriculture buildings. But yeah, you know, I was south of State Street. I had no clue what was going on. Uh, it was a, it was a fun time. I had a really crappy blaster. It was like a retaliator with a with a really jank Mega Magnus master key that I made in my dorm with like a screwdriver. <laughs> Uh, drilling holes with the screwdrivers in a pocket knife, not a good time. But uh, yeah, so um, it was first game week, mainly survived because I just followed around all the experienced players that looked like they knew they what they were doing. Uh, I will fully admit I contributed zero to my group. I was dead weight. And uh, surprisingly enough, I made it all the way to extraction, partially out of cowardice and running from conflict. And I would have extracted... But uh, the, the mission was we had to get three slips of paper scattered around campus at different checkpoints. Uh, each checkpoint had a different slip of paper. So uh, me and the one veteran dude I went with, we separated from the main group of humans. Uh, we, got the, we got the first two slips of paper fine. We only had to circumvent, you know, one horde of zombies. Uh, then the third slip of paper, it's in this, uh, this area of campus called Clapping Circles, where you have like four hills on either side of this circle in the middle. So if you're in the middle of the circle, you can't see what's coming at all. So I, I run down the side and I get into the inner circle and I grab this piece of paper and I get tackled by this zombie wearing a ghillie suit. <laughs> and uh, uh, ghillie suits are most definitely not allowed at Purdue's Humans vs. Zombies because uh, his band, his, his headband, Mark was a zombie, was not visible. Also, the, the ref kind of called it, a, the moderator called it a dick move by tackling someone instead of just a light tag. So I got to honor duel him for the slip of paper to extract. Um, so an honor duel is just a 1v1, uh, one zombie versus one human with a sock. I kicked his ass. Uh, I don't know if this is a PG-13 podcast. We'll figure this out. But <laughs> I won. I got the slip of paper. I put it in my running shoe. I hauled all the way back to uh, the other side of campus where the extraction point was. I get to the extraction point. I take off my shoe and grab all three slips of paper. One of them's missing. Fell out of my shoe while I was running. Didn't extract. Got so bummed. Uh, the mod told me I could go back and get it. I didn't. There, It was no point. You know, all of the humans were either extracted or dead. The, the game was over. So that was probably both my best HVZ experience and uh, simultaneously my worst. So I'm glad I came back. Ton of fun. Love the club. Uh, absolutely, that's a that's a great story. Um, no matter how many times I hear that, it never gets old. <laughs> yeah, I I do kind of say that you know to every single new class of players that hasn't heard it, which I guess includes you. I listen to the podcast now, so there you there go. go. There you go. That's life lesson right there. Don't put stuff in your shoe. <laughs> yeah, wear pockets. Uh, have a pocket somewhere. Yeah. I think I was wearing my uh, my old cross country shorts from high school I stole just because I figured running was going to be pretty important. So you know, no no pockets in those. I was just carrying a handful of socks. <laughs> All right, I can't say my first game week was quite as exciting, um, mm -hmm. but I will say I did have a fun moment. I ran with this. this I was a freshman, didn't know what I was doing. One veteran player yeah. took me under his wing, um, and the two of us just kind of went off on our own um, the whole week. It was just the two of us, um, and he was. He kind of steered me away from all the action, which I'm grateful for, but also I felt like, you know, I, I could have had, you know, he, we, we could have engaged a little bit more. We, we were a little bit skittish for, for being a human, but I was a freshman. I didn't know any better. And then Wednesday, we encounter a, a small group of zombies. It's pitch dark. I'm using, I think, a strong arm. Um, so I got six darts, and I'm well aware of that. So my instinct is skirt the horde, and he goes right through it. It's pitch black. I lose sight of him. Um, I, the zombies are, are, are chasing me, but at a certain point they, they, they give up. They realized I'm, I'm too far out and they go back to get him. Um, and I have this moment of, of decisiveness. You know, what do I do? I got the open night on my left and on the right, I got this probably six zombies, but my, my, my friend is back there and I have three darts left. So I decided that, you know what? Like this is a game. I'm going to do the heroic thing. I'm going to get him. I go back there with my strong arm and I'm like, Hey man, are you are are you still alive? You know, I'm, I'm calling out, trying to hear him, and, and he goes, he goes, yeah, I'm fine. And you you just hear the zombie go, what? And then he goes, run. And we both just booked it out of there. And so the, the the point of that is that I went back for him, right? So Friday, it's extraction. 
um, and the, the mission is to get to the bell tower, right? And so he decides yep. what we're going to do, because you can't get to the bell tower until all of the switches around campus have been activated. So mm -hmm. he decides rather than help the humans hit the switches, him and me, we're, we're going to camp the bell tower. So we're, you know, um, we're laying down in the bushes, watching the bell tower and the zombies mill around it. And then I have my, my little walkie-talkie app on my phone, and I'm listening to the humans, you know, and you can just hear them going down. Ah, oh, there's too many of them. Ah, oh, we're being overwhelmed in the fountain. And I'm like, come on, bro, we got to go. And he, he's like, no, no, we're going to survive. We're going to extract. And so I was like, eh, okay. Um, and then, but it didn't matter anymore, because at that point, the final switch was flipped, and everyone's like, you know, go to the bell tower, go, go. So we, we stand up from the bushes, we book it towards the bell tower. I see a zombie coming at me, what I think is a zombie, coming at me. And so I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in the right headspace. I'm like, it's a zombie. I don't need to run. I, I got this. I hit him with two darts, and then he, he's still mm -hmm. coming. So I hit him with a sock, too, just to be sure. Um, just, you know, <laughs> like, underhand toss. He runs up. He puts his hand on my shoulder, and he goes, witch. Because mm -hmm. apparently he had, at, at that time, they were marking witches with, like, yellow headbands instead of orange ones. And under that phosphor orange lighting, everything is orange. Yep. And so I was so disappointed because I was, like, maybe 15 feet from the from touching the bell tower and extracting yeah and so i i found my my partner at the end and he goes yeah i saw that was a witch but i decided to let you take one for the team so i could extract and i was like what <laughs> i came back for you <laughs> i went back for you uh and so that um that i, I learned kind of the hard way you know you uh <laughs> you gotta partner with someone you can trust when you're uh when you're running school. yep Yep. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I have very different experiences from uh, that HBZ game week than you. Um, while, while you were while you were around sitting in the bushes during extraction, I was I was tooling around with a squad of folks. We were just sprinting, trying to activate as many of the switches as we could. And at that point, the club was pretty short staffed, so um, they they didn't have all the switches out at once, which was kind of annoying. So uh, we we probably did like two or three laps of campus before we found all of them. Just yeah. because they could only have like two out of the, I don't know how many there were. I think there was like five, I don't remember. But they only could have so many out at a time. So uh, after I'm doing the last lap of campus, again, I figure, oh, they always put extraction objectives in the clapping circle. Lo and behold, there it is. <laughs> uh, so I run to the clapping circle. I see the mod there. Uh, he's getting there the same time I do. You know, he, uh, I see him. I touch him. I tag him. He's like, yo, yeah, that's the last one. So then I light up the human radio chat. We were all on Zell. I light it up. Uh, what was it? It was a uh, clapping circle switches go. Get the bell tower. Go, go, go. That's that's what it was. That's exactly what I heard. And, and then we, we got up, booked it, and I got murked um, immediately after that. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, uh, I can't say I was noble and I stuck with my squad at that point. As far as I'm concerned, once all of the extraction conditions are met, it's every man for themselves. <laughs> Clearly. So, Clearly, <laughs> I, will, I will admit I left my entire squad there to die, and I sprinted past them. <laughs> I think most of them made it back okay, though, because the zombies were all occupied with another group of humans. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I think that that's, the... that's actually mm -hmm. we're 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 running a little bit low on time here today. Um, so another mm -hmm. fun feature about these is we're going to try to keep these as short as humanly possible, just because we don't have that long of an attention span. And I know you probably don't either. So, yep. so join us uh, next week. We'll be, or I, I can't say next week. Whenever, <laughs> whenever these go up, um, and we'll be talking <laughs> next <about> episode. <laughs> next episode. Join us next episode. And listen to us. You know, ramble awkwardly on. I hope you enjoyed getting to know us a little bit. Um, if you want to know more about us, about the campus, about the Boiler League of Tag, check out their website at was it Boiler League of Tag Weebly. Um, yep, www.boilerleagueoftag.weebly.com. All kinds of good stuff. You can find some cool videos, pictures of both of us. Purdue's HVZ is, uh, I want to say, super unique. And we'll talk more about that later. There's your uh, there's, yep. there's your cliffhanger. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you guys for everyone who's tuned in. This has been Magdove. Magdove. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.